So question one then. The number of visitors to a zoo in 2024 was 118750, 118,750. It's expected to increase by 4% each year over the next two years. It tells you two years. Calculate the expected number of visitors in 2026. Well, you don't need to figure out then how many years it is from 24 to 26 because it just told you. Well, it's just apply that percentage twice. Only use your calculator. So if it starts at that and it goes up 4%, the best way to do that is use a factor. Multiply by 1.04 because that 1 keeps it the same and the 0.04 adds on the 4%. And if you're going to do the same again after that, multiply by another one, which means square it. And when you press the buttons, you'll get 128440. And acquire three marks. Number two here, a shop sells footballs in the shape of a sphere. It's very handy. With a diameter of 21, calculate the volume. Three marks. Formula figures answer. Well, the volume of sphere is V equals 4 upon 3 pi r cubed. But watch, because the radius isn't that 21, that's the diameter. So the radius is 10.5 centimetres. But apart from that, it's just put in the figures. Now you can use 3.14. I'm just going to leave it as pi because I'm going to press the pi button. But I'll be multiplying that by 10.5 to the power 3. Press the buttons. And when you do that, you get 4849.04 and so on. But it tells you that you have to put it to three significant figures, the first three figures. So that's 4, 8, and that 4 will go up to a 5 because of that 9, but it has to stay 4,000, so put in a 0 centimetres cubed. Another 3 marks. So number 3, I forgot to change that number last time. Now I don't understand why this question is in paper 2 where you can use a calculator. The mass of a gold atom, I'll just use G instead of AU, is 3.27 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. So that's putting it, you never use your finger, should you? That's putting it in scientific notation. You have to give your answer in scientific notation. But your calculator will do that for you. It says the mass of one atom of carbon is 6.1% of that, right? 6.1% of 3.27 times 10 to the negative 22. I'll put the grams in later. So what's that? Well, you just press the buttons. And you don't have to figure out about moving the point. One thing you could do to show a bit of goodwill, even though the calculator's going to do the work, is show that that means 0 0.061 times 3.27 with the 10 to the power negative 22. But the calculator will just change that for you. And when you press the button, it comes up as 1.9947 times 10 to the negative 23. So I'll probably round that off to just three figures then. 1.99 times 10 to the power negative 23 grams. Just two marks this time, but then you didn't even bother about Scientific notation. Calculator took care of it. <coughs> Number four now. The weights in kilograms of a sample of rugby players in Scotland are shown. So you've got these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weights here. N equals seven. Calculate the mean and standard deviation. So that'll be the little table then. Now you've got two formulae. But you can start your table off the same for both of them. So I'll have my x here, and I'll work out the mean. Then I can decide what to do. Because really the formula are there for different reasons. The one with the x minus x bar is for when you've got a nice mean. When it's a whole number. So you can do a nice wee subtraction and square it. If it turns out that the mean, once you've added them up, 
happens to be a nasty number with decimals in it, then you'd use the other formula. Just get all the squares and use that other formula. Right, so what have we got here? I think I'll put them in order. We've got 106, 100, 106, 100, and 503, 99, 93, 92, 99, 93, 92, and an 88. Whoops, not too tidy. I'm just doing this very quickly anyway. So add that up, and that comes to 686. So that's sigma x. Now you don't need to put them in order, I just put them in order just to make it look neater here and you can sort of spot mistakes. Now what does that come to for the mean? So that will be sigma x, add them all up and divide by how many there are. So it'll be 686 divided by 7. Which you could have done yourself I suppose, but that's a nice neat 98. Now with the 98 I'm going to go ahead and do x minus x bar because they'll all just be small single numbers. <clears throat> so what have we got? Well, take away 98, that'll be 1. That'll be, that's less than it. That's minus 5, so that's 1 more. What, negative 6 and that's 10 below. And then we're going 5 above, 7 above, 8 above. Now there is a check when you do that. If you add them up and they come to 0, then you know you haven't made a mistake so far. So now I can go ahead and use the squares of them. So I'm not squaring these numbers like in the other formula, I'm just squaring these small ones. So 64, that'll be 49, what is that, it's a 5, 25, oh, don't use your finger, 1, 25, 36, 100. Now I want to add these up to get that sigma x minus x bar squared, adding the squares that you see in the formula. That's a very nice 300. So now you can use the formula that you'll see at the front. That's an easy one to remember. Except it's over n minus 1. So that means it's going to be 300 divided by 6. Well, that's root 50, but you don't need to bother with that. Root 50 is even good. That's 25 twos, that's 5 root 2. But anyway, you're using a calculator. And so for that, you're going to get. 7.071 and so on. So I'll just take that to one decimal place. 7.1. Now they're both kilograms. Now that was four marks. There's a lot more involved in getting those four marks than there were in those previous marks. Now there's still the second part though. Whoops. But you've got to make that comparison with another set of another data set where you're going to compare the mean and the standard deviation by saying something about the average and the spread. A sample of rugby players in France have a mean weight of 105, oh they're heavier, the mean told you that, and a standard deviation of 5.9, well they're a more tightly knit group if you like, there's less spread in their weights. And that's the two comments you have to make for these two marks. So it's just lots of writing out, I don't know if I could be bothered writing all this out just now. So you would say that the French were, you expand that more for an exam, were heavier. And what told you that? The mean, uh, on average I should say, on average. As the mean, and there we what again, 105. 105 is greater than 98, and also the French were more consistent. Consistent in weight. No closer together to each other as the we'll just put standard deviation and abbreviation. As the standard deviation, what was theirs again? 5.9 is less than the 7.1. They were all kilograms of course. Right. So number five, express this quadratic expression here in this form, the completed squared form, the type that you would use, for instance, to find the turning point in the, on a parabola and so on. Well, 
I suppose there's different ways of doing it, I'll just do it quickly the way I would do it. I would just say, well, that 19 doesn't match, I really want to find what completes the square, so I'll leave that 19 out of it, because I know the pattern. If that goes into a square, it would have been square the first, square the last, twice the product, square the first, that must have been an X. Twice the product makes 10, well that must have been a 5. And if that's a plus, it's a plus 5. Then I can take a step back and say, well that should have been square the last, so it should really have been a 25 that went there. Except, of course, there wasn't a 25 there, so I'll have to take it away again. So that's minus 6. Number six, what does it say? For three marks, a party hat is made in the shape of a cone and you can get that by taking a sector of a circle and folding it up. And this is the sector of the circle that's used. It's got an angle of 170 degrees in it. It's just, it's, what's the area of this? Well, it's just a bit of a circle. So the area will just be a bit of a circle. What fraction have you got? Well, the angle tells you you've only got 170 out of the 360. So just put that in. One minute, I'll knock that down. I'll take off the zero. Even though you're using a calculator, I'll do that wee bit. Save a couple of button presses times. I'll leave pi as pi, because I'm just going to press the pi button, but you can put 3.14 down if you like. Radius is 15, so 15 squared. Press the buttons. And you get the answer. 3, 3, 3.79 and so on. And we'll just put it down to three figures then. Three, three, four centimetres squared. Not a lot to that. Number seven, just for two marks here. This is meant to be a regular pentagon. It means all the sides are the same length and all the internal angles are the same size. This angle here. EFA is 65, that's a straight line. Do you get that optical illusion with this? That's actually bent outwards. Calculate the size of angle FEA, so this is the one you want. Well, the first thing you would get is, well, how could you get this? If you could get one more inside here, then you can use the 180 total to find the other one. But you'll have to get that from out here somewhere. So you think, well, if I get this angle, that would do it. Right, well, what you can work out immediately is one of the angles inside, because if it's a pentagon with five sides, it will be 360 divided by 5, which is 72. So if we take this triangle here, oh dear, dear, that will be 72 degrees. Now, there are more, you could then say, well, I'll work from that, I'll work out that, and from that, I'll work out that, and from those two, I'll work out that, but in fact, you know the answer to that straight away. These two angles, which are the same because it's isosceles, these two angles are whatever it takes to make 72 up to 180. Now, those two angles are the same as those two angles because it's the two corners and those little triangles. So, if those two angles are what it takes to make up to 180 from 72, then this angle will be the 72 because you've still got the same two angles making up 180. So really straight away I know that's 72 as well. So I've only got these two calculations. That's 72, which makes that 72. And so the one that you want, angle FEA, is going to be, not left myself enough, don't use your finger, 180 minus 65 plus 72. Of course you don't need to use your calculator for that. And that gives you 43 degrees. Number eight, you've got this, I know it's not a very good diagram. You've got this tall cuboid sitting on a set of three dimensional axes, X, Y, Z. So you've got three coordinates then. It gives you the coordinates of two of the points, L0312 and then 4C0 for 3 and it says what's the coordinates of part A, M. Well, 
M's directly above Q, Q's directly behind R, that's in the Y direction, and R is 4 along. So it must be 4 along, then you're going back that distance, which is the same as that, which is the same as that, which is 3 back. And then you're going up this distance, which is the same as that, which is 12. <coughs> and then I'll put part B down here. Calculate, calculate the length of the diagonal OM. Now that's three marks, but you, you know the answer anyway. Now the diagonal OM, I'm just going to do it that quick way. Hopefully the quick way would be this. You would say it's just going to be like Pythagoras, only in three dimensions. So square and add the three sides. So four, that was four along, three back and 12 up. So it'll be four squared plus three squared plus 12 squared. Because that you've got four squared plus three squared would satisfy this bottom triangle. And then once you've got that, you would just have to take this vertical triangle and you've got the answer to that plus the 12 squared. But you know the answer. Three, four makes that a five. And a 5, 12 makes that a 13. You know this whole thing's going to come to 13. But I'll just spell it all out. So 16 plus 9 plus 144, which is the square root of 169. I didn't actually add that up. I just knew it would be 169 since the answer is going to be 13. And then in number 9, 3 marks, change the subject of this formula to k. Well, that just means get k at the front on its own. Well, first of all, get it in the right place. So I'm just going to swap them over. Just looking at it the other way around. Right, get rid of the bits and pieces. So this separate term here, a quarter kx squared can come across and add on. Now, the two parts here, the dividing part and the multiplying part can go across and do the opposite. So the 4 can go across and multiply all of it. So put them in a bracket as they're both going to get operated on. And that x squared can come across and divide. And then you're done.